Welcome. Good evening, everyone. Glory to Jesus Christ. So nice to see you all here this evening. I'm Nicholas Bodel, president of the Mid-Eastern Federation of Greek Orthodox Church Musicians. And I'm glad to see you all here as we kick off our virtual gathering this weekend so that you're aware this session tonight is being recorded for those who are not able to join us live. So much has happened since I took office in the summer of 2019. To jump right in here to my State of the Federation report for this year, we've had a lot of musical events uh, taking place this past year in our region. I'd like to recap those for you, just highlight some of the major events that have happened. So I wanna take you back in time to the summer of 2019. And of course, in July, we had a really wonderful convention. I'm going to reshare. You can all see my screen. Okay. So in Troy, Michigan, it was our last big in-person gathering back in July of 2019. St. Nicholas Church in Troy. Our hosts in Troy were so hospitable. We had so much fun, a lot of great food, a lot of wonderful parea together. It was, of course, the worldwide premiere of the Bodle music, whoever that guy is, under the direction of the very talented Constantine Soleinu, pictured on the left. Uh, she's from Dallas. She served as our guest conductor that year. It was quite a memorable weekend for us all. We had about 85 participants there, so we are trending upwards in the size of our convention participation from prior years, so that's been very encouraging to see. A couple months later, we had another event take place in Westland, Michigan. Our friends at Saints Constantine and Helen in Westland hosted a vocal workshop with a voice professor from Albion College, Robert Doyle. This is something that I really am encouraging all of our parishes to take a hard look at, bringing in professionals and music experts from outside our usual circles to teach us and to inspire us and to help us really think outside the box in the way that we approach our singing for the glory of God. And then just a couple months after that, we had our friend Maritza Kalis. I don't know if Maritza's on yet this evening, their director in Westland. Uh, Maritza led another workshop for us with a focus on singing a cappella, which is a very important skill. Many of our choirs, as you know, sing with organ accompaniment. So spending some quality time to practice and sing a cappella really helped the group focus and actively listen to each other, um, as you should in any choral situation, of course. But this really gives singers a heightened awareness. Maritz also focused on warm-ups and intervals. She channeled both the great George Raptus and Julia Child in her work. This workshop was live streamed from the church, so that allowed musicians from across Mefcox to tune in and to sing along with the group that day. Also in February of 2020, we were pleased to promote a concert in Grand Rapids entitled All You Need Is Love. And that involved the choirs, the Orthodox choirs of West Michigan to benefit the IOCC. We also supported a very innovative music event down in Columbus, Ohio, How Sweet the Sound, where a newly composed setting of the Eastern Orthodox Vesper service was debuted in the style of black gospel music. It was very cool to be there for that and His Eminence Metropolitan Savas was also in attendance. You can visit howsweetthesound.net to listen to the recording from that live performance. I would encourage you all to check that out at some point. The following month in March, we celebrated the Sunday of Orthodoxy on March 8th, 2020, and St. Demetrius Church in Rocky River, Ohio, hosted the Pan-Orthodox Vesper Service with His Grace, Bishop Andre of Cleveland, and he was presiding at the service alongside a marvelous Pan-Orthodox choir that assembled from all over Cleveland to sing for the service that was under the direction of Michael Pilot, who serves as the director, choir director of Holy Trinity Church in Parma. So as we start to return to normal, I really hope to see more of these gatherings of our church musicians across the Orthodox jurisdictions that we have to show that while we may have different musical backgrounds, different musical traditions, we are all one body of Christ. So of course, this was March, 2020, COVID arrived here shortly thereafter, putting many of our plans on hold for our annual convention our big plans for the uh, clergy laity Congress here in Cleveland, but our ministry in Mefcox did not stop just because of the pandemic. In lieu of our usual convention last year, last summer, we jumped right into planning and hosting some virtual events. The first of these was our first edition of Sharing in Song. Um, we call this 
series we had, Sharing in Song, we brought in various directors from throughout our federation. They presented a variety of hymns, which offered a chance to become familiar with some new repertoire, to learn the meaning of the hymns, when they can be sung either during the liturgy or if it'd be more appropriate as a paraliturgical hymn and also tips on singing and teaching a given piece to a choir. It really offered an open forum for questions and just parea at the end, which up to this point last year, our church musicians had been without, hadn't been able to see each other for about six months. So it was a good opportunity for some fellowship at the end as well. The following month in December of 2020, there was such a great response from the first series of sharing and song and there was such a great need uh, among our directors that we had one of our directors come back, Anna Maria Miller, pictured in the top right from Nashville. She came back and did a special Zoom workshop for us on how to hold an effective choir rehearsal virtually, which many of our directors found to be useful to get their groups back together, at least virtually, and a number of other choir members also joined into that session. It really helped our choirs pick back up with rehearsing and learning new music via Zoom, at least temporarily until the restrictions were lifted to allow the return back to in-person gatherings and practices. Fast forward another month or so, and we had our virtual choir retreat back in January and February of this year, a very special virtual church, virtual church music institute, which we co-hosted with the Eastern Federation of Church Musicians. It was led by Dr. Anne-Marie Kukios of Ann Arbor. Good evening, Anne-Marie. Give a little wave to everybody if you can see Anne-Marie on the side. It was an event that combined a five-week series of workshop instruction sessions and the option to join a new virtual choir, which resulted in the production of several hymns, including two pieces by, one by George Raptus, and we had another by Presbytera Anna Gallus in English, which to my knowledge had never been professionally recorded in English. So it was very cool and quite an educational experience for everyone who participated. It really garnered a lot of excitement uh, between our two federations and beyond. We even had some participants from Canada, I believe, who were previously part of our federation before the archdiocese was, uh, was reorganized back in the 90s. And of course, we were honored to have both of our metropolitans, Nicholas and Savas, with us for the retreat. Here are a couple pictures. We had a reunion after the event was over, came back uh, to watch the debut of all those music videos uh, that were produced. So. Uh, bravo to everybody who was involved with that special project. Then we had a few more virtual choirs come to the forefront. Um, they've been popping up all across our region, really. St. John the Baptist Choir in Sterling Heights recently recorded a Paschal virtual choir presentation. I know that our friends down at the Holy Trinity St. Nicholas Choir in Cincinnati have produced several recordings over the past year, and those are posted on their YouTube channel. I'm sure there are many others, not just in Mefcox, but choirs across the country that have really been creative in their music ministry and are still singing in different ways. And Sharing in Song was such a huge success, we brought it back for a second series back uh, this year. But after Pascha, we had a little reprise of the series. It focused on the hymns of Pascha and some of the post paschal feasts like Ascension and Pentecost. It included some very dynamic speakers that we had from across the country. And we invited various priests from our federation to offer reflection on the theme and the theological meaning behind these special festal hymns. So it was pretty timely. It coincided really nicely with the, these church holidays and it was well attended by our church musicians. So all of these workshops that I've mentioned have been recorded and most are already posted on our YouTube channel. So you can find that through our website, mefcox.org, or you can use the URL pictured here on the screen. We have a whole webpage now on the mefcox.org website under the resources tab, you can find a whole list dedicated to our past workshops and CMIs for those who are not able to attend those live. So I would encourage you to check those out if you haven't had a chance to tune in. Last summer, we held probably our first ever electronic election of officers. And then we were pleased to award five scholarships to several deserving students across our federation from Columbus to Camp Hill, Pennsylvania, up to Ann Arbor and to Indianapolis. And we will be awarding several more scholarships this year. That's in addition to our continuing education grant program, which offers grants to a, for shorter term educational opportunities, music lessons, and other events throughout the year. So we're very glad to be able to offer both these programs to support our church musicians in their music education. So here we are now in our first ever virtual conference weekend. I think this was a year of many firsts for us. 
actually we had a very productive year despite COVID. In a way, the virus helped orient us properly. We were already starting to realize pre-COVID that our federation is and needs to be much more than just our annual convention. So when we postponed our convention last year, I said, look, people, we really have to do something. Our ministry doesn't just stop because there's no convention. So I'm very proud of our whole organization. Our church music education committee, uh, comprised of Vicki Pappas, Barbara Minton, and Kiriakos Theophanus. They put their heads together and came up with the first virtual series back in the fall, and we've been going strong ever since. So bravo sauce to you all. It's been fun to just be along for the ride and also supporting our sister federations <laughs> across the country in their music endeavors as well. So administratively, of course, we switched to all virtual Zoom meetings for our board and committees to get together. And even before COVID, we had started incorporating Zoom into our in-person board meetings. And that new hybrid approach has really helped those who cannot attend in person to participate actively in our discussions and in the Federation's business. So remember, our Federation MEFGOX is very unique in that it's comprised of two metropolises. So we have many parishes across nine states, as you can see pictured here. So with as geographically spread out a region as we are, I think that the hybrid model is really here to stay, even when we resume our in-person meetings, hopefully in the fall. Some other board news. I recently appointed Ted Neforest as parliamentarian of MEFGOX. Ted has been our faithful state representative for the Detroit metro area and is one of our past presidents. He's been a reliable advisor to me these past two years, as well as being very well versed in our bylaws He's really already been playing the role of parliamentarian at our business meetings just to ensure that we follow proper procedure, Robert's rules of order. So I could not think of a more worthy individual to serve this role. And we're all very grateful for Ted's support and his wisdom on our board. So Ted, if you're there, good evening and Axios, he is worthy. He, he just entered Nicholas. <laughs> oh, good. Hi, Ted. Hi, Anna. So something else that came up recently in our board meetings is the idea of respecting the privacy of our board members and our state representatives. So to that end, we revamped our board roster and contact list that's published on our website. Up until the spring, we had listed each member's personal home address. So after careful consideration and some inspiration from our friends at the San Francisco Music Federation, we removed all personal mailing addresses and replaced them with, with each individual's home parish address for mailing purposes. Our next step there is to remove personal email addresses, and we're going to set up official generic addresses that are specific to the person's role. So, for example, we already have president at mefgox.org set up for me. Um, protecting our personal information, I feel, online nowadays is key, and we're really proud to be taking these necessary steps. And finally, with all the uncertainty of the pandemic this past year, we decided earlier this year to develop a survey to solicit your opinions and your comfort level of returning to choir and singing at a convention. It was really interesting to see where people stand. Many respondents indicated that they probably would not be interested in singing at a convention until we could safely sing together unmasked. So as you're probably aware, it's not the most comfortable to sing while wearing a standard mask. There are many singers masks available now that make it easier, but even practically when you're singing in a choral setting from a director's point of view, it helps to be able to see each other, to read lips, to focus on vocal production, proper vowel sounds. So it seems we fortunately have reached that point with the proper precautions taken. Some of our choirs have already returned to singing. Others are rehearsing now and planning to return in September for the Sunday liturgy. So it's very encouraging to see and I know that many of our faithful have missed the choral element of our church's music tradition for over a year now. So with that being said, I will stop sharing. Now near the time, at the end of our time this evening, I'm going to be giving you all a glimpse into the events that are taking place over the next couple of days. But before then, we'd like to welcome at this point, both of our Metropolitans, Nicholas and Savas, who are with us today to speak on the theme of moving onward to give us their reflections on new opportunities and new challenges that lie ahead for us post pandemic. So as we begin, you may submit any questions that you may have via the chat. There should be a chat button in your Zoom window. Just click on chat and type in your question and send it to Barbara Minton, our vice president, or you can simply raise your virtual hand. You should also have a raise hand button in the Zoom window and you may be recognized to unmute and ask a question near the end. So good evening, uh, Metropolitans Nicholas and Sava. So nice to have you both, your blessing. Uh, your Eminence, Metropolitan Nicholas, I would like to start with you. I hope you're well. So nice to see you through Zoom anyway. Je dois commencer, moi? 
¿Cómo está? No, no hablo. Oh, oh, signo no, me. No, okay. No, you know. Greeklish. No, so, who knows? What am I going to do? So, Your Eminence, I think we have a general sense of, of where we are in our, our ministry and church music, um, at least in our local home parishes after these many months of the pandemic. Uh, primarily cantors leading the singing at various church services, but some small choral groups involved as well. So tell us where you see our ministry heading here in the coming year and what you might hope to see uh, as we emerge and return fully to our activities in our churches. Well, uh, Nicholas, good to see you. And I see Metropolitan Sabas, amen, and all the lovely people that are that are here with us. I see we have how many, 20 participants? Is that what I see? Something, anyway. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to have a, a few minutes of time with you on this virtual uh, conference. Um, I would tell you that the first thing, there, there are a couple of things in different ways that, that everybody noticed with the COVID. And the first issue is that there seemed to be something missing without the, the choir. There seemed to be something missing. And that missing reality was that larger sense of group singing. Um, but I, I have been spotlighted. Oh, okay. But the, the, the concern that comes to me uh, from this was that this was really a, 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 a major ministry of all the parishes. And it got shut down, unfortunately, during this time period, it got shut down. So uh, one of the things that people saw to be fair, was that that kind of orchestration of glorious sound was not there. Now, <clears throat> in many of the parishes, and some of are still are doing that, we were just with the, you know, a chanter, one, maybe two people chanting or, you know, intoning or reading, whatever they were doing. And the other thing that people noticed was that the service finished more quickly. And that, you know, you did through a kind of a, a little bit of a, a wiggle wrench into this issue um, because people said, well, why is it, a, you know, an hour? And then if the choir's there, we're you know, going to be an hour and a half, an hour depends on what it's going to be. And, uh, you know, there are other measures that go into that, how long the, the priest speaks. Occasionally the bishops want to speak longer. I've never heard of that, Nick, but, you know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just on the periphery, so I don't know. Um, but I think that if I were to, and I look at what's coming, I would tell you that I don't think we are done yet uh, with this pandemic issue. We're, we keep hearing about this Delta variant that's coming through, and I'm concerned that we're really going to go a little bit back for a while. Uh, again, that's, that's my sense. Um, and the problem being, of course, is that it's, it's not an issue, mask or anti-mask or this or vaccine. Did you get a vaccine? That's not my issue. My issue is that ultimately we have a liability to help everybody stay as safe as, as, as we can, regardless of people's personal issues on masks or vaccines. That's not the issue. The issue is we have an obligation to do the most that we can do with whatever knowledge there is uh, to try and keep everyone safe. Now, what I'm going to suggest is something that maybe we, we can look at now because one of the things that we saw was that there was that greater, um, the choir brings a greater sense of community participation. And maybe, Nico, what we have to look at is the ability to encourage more people to sing with us, maybe even from the pews. That there would, that, that instead of having what we have now, you know, while well, we're coming back with the choirs, now the metropolis of Detroit is open on the choirs. But instead of having, you know, potentially a, a chanter here, a chanter there that may come back with the, with the next rise of the COVID, that we could have more people join with us from the pews in singing. So sometimes the music, it's nice to have some glorious sounding music, but maybe sometimes we have to have a little bit, something that's a little bit simple, uh, so that everybody can participate. You know, even people who are going to sing on the flat key, like me. So if you, you're going to sing on the flat key, you know, we have to have we have to have that ability, and that's my uh, uh, you know my concern is that we saw that we lost an important ministry. 
We, it's an important ministry because it resounds in the church and it fills the air. There's no empty, when the choir is singing, there's no empty space. That, that music goes out and fills the church and that's, it's a glorious kind of thing. So that's an important issue. But what it has also taught us is that that is a ministry of, of the church and we can have more people join even from the pews. So maybe sometimes, I don't know how the priests would feel. I don't know what priests are on here. Are any priests on here? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. Not tonight. Maybe we'll ask, so maybe, uh, you know, I'll ask some of my clergy what they think. If we, if we occasionally, um, maybe instead of a, all, you know, of a, of a longer sermon, take a few minutes and teach, have the community learn part of a hymn. Yeah. So that they could, you know, while they're all there, they could sing it learn to sing it together and make that piece a little bit of a standard piece because that music that's in your heart, when that music becomes that, that choir uh, repertoire, when it becomes something that's in your heart, it never leaves you. It never leaves you. And because of that, it can change you. It can embolden you. I always you know, try and tell the priests when they're preaching, make sure you give a take-home message. And part of the reality for the choir is that you have to have that take-home in the heart so that when people get out, they're gonna think some, maybe it's gonna be Ayos or Theos, maybe it's the Holy God, maybe something. Something is gonna stir their heart and their mind uh, on a more regular basis at home. And it will do so when they know how to sing it too. It will do so when they can join in some of the simple songs. So I'm looking forward to, you know, to be fair, I, you know, we, we're technically, I'm waiting. I, you know, you just get the sense that we're going to be out for another strike on this uh, uh, COVID variant that's coming through. Uh, but my goal would be for our choirs uh, to help us figure out how we can put some of that music into the heart of everyone. So it's not simply a Sunday performance, but it's a it's a daily heartfelt reflection. That's what I'd like to see. Wonderful. Thank you, Your Eminence. Thank I, you. I agree. We've had, you know, even in our local parishes, just to sing the church hymn together and everybody's voice resounds from the congregation. It's, it's very moving, very powerful. So that, uh, that is certainly something we need to focus on. I'd, I'd like to bring in Metropolitan Savas too at this point. Good evening again, Your Eminence, your blessing. Um, make sure you're uh, grab the mute there. Yes. So I uh, to ask you, how do you see us moving forward, moving onward in this coming year? What what is, is your reflection for this evening? Well, I'd like to begin by welcoming, greeting my brother Hierarch, Mitch Paul and Nicholas, and uh, thanking him for his reflections. And um, uh, Following up by beginning with, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, this isn't what you want me to say, but I too want to express my concern about calling it over before it's over. You know, I just saw before we came on that Troy Palomalu, uh, just a few days before his induction in the Football Hall of Fame in Canton, has just posted that he's tested positive and is not sure what it'll mean for his participation. Okay. Just three days ago, we lost the Metropolitan of Kinshasa in Africa, uh, a very 72-year-old uh, man, but uh, he was uh, flown to Thessaloniki to be treated for his COVID and he died upon arrival. And the next day, the newly, uh, and he'd only been the Metropolitan there for a couple years. And the uh, Metropolitan of Gambia uh, has also tested positive. And uh, uh, he's only been for a couple of years and it's just tearing, uh, you know. Um, I, I, and and I, I'm gonna just relay personal stuff. You know, my very closest friend in the ministry when I was in Kalamazoo for the two years before I, I came out to my first parish uh, was a Protestant minister, a wonderful guy named Danny Janes. Uh, who is the only one I've maintained contact with 20 years later. 
and uh, we're Facebook friends. And he posted yesterday that although he and his wife, he's retired to North Carolina as a Baptist minister and probably the best preacher I've ever heard. Uh, uh, he's, uh, you know, treated the COVID thing initially sort of lightly, you know, thinking it had been pumped up, but he and his wife were vaccinated as soon as they could be in March and April, uh, the Pfizer vaccine. And he posted yesterday that he was having a respiratory issue and had tested positive and asked for prayers to keep him out of the hospital. And just a few minutes before this started, his wife posted that he has been, uh, he's in the hospital and uh, with uh, respiratory failure. And, uh, you know, I mean, and that's a scary thing, you know, a vaccinated person, you know, and, and it's just, you know, we can, try to shrug it off, we can be angry about it, you know, but the reality is, you know, we're not in control of the environment, you know, it just things happen and we have to react uh, in a responsible manner, you know, and I certainly hope that every one of you who can be vaccinated has been vaccinated. I just, I'd hate to think that you're putting yourself at risk and, um, and others. So nice. I begin with that. That it, you know, I, I, uh, I'm tired of losing people, you know. Uh, um, uh, and I, let me begin by commending you for not, uh, for doing all that you could during this period. I mean, you've, you've, you've made delicious lemonade from these lemons. You know, this has been very wonderful uh, use of, of the available uh, technology. Um, and I didn't know about the YouTube channel. I see there's only seven subscribers as of now, but uh, I was looking for a way to link it to my own Facebook and just advertise it. You know, I just now, when you said about your homepage, I, I went and I, I linked it to my I, po I, I, have, I posted it right away to my Facebook, but I don't see a way to do that right now with the Facebook channel, but I'm, I'm going to, I mean, with the YouTube channel, but I am going to do that. Um, um, but I'd like to, to, to reflect on some of the things uh, my brother said about, you know, learning hymns and, and taking them to heart and all that. Um, and I, you know, I'm, I'm a big advocate of that as well, but um I also am a little bit leery sometimes of, of an ossified uh, liturgy that, it, you know, when, a, when a, a parish learns a liturgy and can't unlearn it, you know, I have uh, such an experience at my cathedral, you know, I, I hope, I don't know if anybody's here from my cathedral, I love you all, but I don't, I'm not crazy about your liturgy, you know. I mean, they seem to have it in the bylaws that they have to, to sing the, the, the composition of, their, of, of somebody from 20 or 30 years ago, which is bizarre, you know? I mean, if you haven't heard it, you know, Sosonima O Anastasik Necron, Psalon Dasi, Psalon Dasi, Psalon Dasi, Alleluia. I always think I'm in some kind of a German musical. Well, you that know? was new 30 years ago. Huh? Yeah, that well, I mean, it's just, it's just weird, you know, and, it, and I don't want to hear it anymore, you know? And I'm also tired of, for, quite frankly, if it's the same liturgy, excuse me for getting a little, why is it in peace, let us pray to the Lord. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Page two, everybody, page two, turn the page. For the peace from above and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, I mean, really, people, really, I love you, but you've got to, if you're going to be doing it every week, you've got to pick up the pace. 
so that kind of piggybacks on the long thing because people are now thinking, yeah, this can only, that doesn't have to be two hours. It could be an hour and 15 minutes, you know? But, um, and I love a performance liturgy too. I mean, I think that that there, you know, I think we should treat some things like, you know, like the, in the days of Mozart, when I don't think you were expected to attend a liturgy in here, you know, mass in E minor or whatever it was, you know, I mean, uh, I, I think a lot of that was concert, wasn't it? I mean, Anne Marie, am I right? Huh? We're, 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 I mean, no. I'm not yes and you. no. Uh, it, it really was written to be done in the, in a sanctuary, but not in the style. Ours is a whole different style. And the pacing of what you're talking about is so important in the dialogue between the clergy and the respondents. I mean, that's all very important, whereas that is just a presentation of movements. But it was written for worship. Okay. Well, <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. That's all right. You don't have to support me in everything. You know. <laughs> I feel bad. I live and learn. Live and learn. Um, but you know, I'm just saying that that sometimes it can be frustrating from the part of you, point of view of the worshiper, you know, when um, uh, that should be part of your workshops too. I think you know, picking up cues or pacing, you know, um, uh, helping to move things along. Uh, I don't know. Um, that's really all, all I can, uh, I don't really have a, a long-term uh, vision. I mean, the, the, the long-term, the, the, our, our hope is that we return to some kind of normal sooner rather than later. But my fear is that it will be later, you know, because uh, I do think that we have to, I don't think we're going to go back to uh, the early days because we are, many of us are vaccinated and that's a factor. You know, you can't, we, we're not going to, I don't see a lockdown happening. I don't see uh, universal masking happening, but um, um, but I do think that caution is, is uh, we, we can't act as if, you know, it's all over now. You know, I, I'm going to some gatherings and, and I, I, you know, I was really surprised. Nicholas, at, when, in church the other Sunday, it was like Moscow, wasn't it? I mean, it's pretty amazing. I was up. I was up at St. Paul's uh, for the first time in a couple of years, and it took a good twenty minutes to distribute the andidro. You know, it was a really packed church, and I was happy. I was happy, but uh, I'm also a little bit uh, worried. <laughs> you know, uh, because. Uh, you know, I'm not of the school that says that if you're in the church, if you're coming to church, that you are protected from the natural world, you know, because bad things can happen in church. You know, people can be shot in church. You know, people can, fires can start in church. Uh, people have heart attacks in church. You know, the, 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 your reason for gathering is not going to, to provide a shield. What the church teaches you is the value of human life and how to uh, uh, live life um, in such a way that uh, you're preparing for real life in the age to come. And that you can face the challenges of this life with uh, the courage of a martyr, you know, because you are empowered by the presence of the Holy Spirit, by the participation in the sacraments, by the example of the, by the intercession of the saints to suffer without complaint, to endure, to, you know, to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. So, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm not, I'm not afraid of us dying because dying is, is, our, is the natural state of things at the, at the moment. But I'd, I'd hate for people to die sooner than they have to. You know, and I'd certainly, I certainly hate the thought, the thought of losing um, uh, our elders before, before their time. So that's my thoughts, my ramble. Happy Friday evening. <laughs> At PCs.
Thank you, Your Eminence. Yes, and I think, you know, going back to the state of COVID, um, you know, it's, it seemed very abrupt when we ceased, uh, the choir ceased uh, last March uh, in 2020. So, uh, you know, choirs have started to come back slowly, cautiously, um, and we've, we've found the ways, you know, with the singer's masks to be able to, and appropriate distancing, if, you know, you are blessed with such a choir loft, choir space for your members to space apart. Um, we're, we're able to do that safely now. And if it's a smaller choral group to represent that, uh, that element of, of choral singing um, with an upbeat pace and, and simple so the congregation can follow along, I, I think that's doable. Um, you know, on, on the offhand, you you know, to on the other side, you hear um, can't follow the canter. Sometimes it's very me melismatic and uh, hard to hard to be able to follow. And there's a place for that too. The the Byzantine chant is can be very ornamental and and uh, I can't yeah. follow them sometimes either. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, that's, a, that's that's a given. <laughs> but there's a growing kind of. Um, fascination with uh, Byzantine, you know, oh, yes. I mean, there's lots of sites that promote it, that uh, uh, promote the teaching of it. There are a lot of young people who are going into it. Um, there's some really active teaching ministries within my metropolis. I mean, my, we've got a chanter in uh, Oakmont, uh, uh, Peter Clyde Papadakis, who has a kind of a mission to teach freely every week and uses it, you know, it, it, it's not just he wants to teach the nooms and the execution and all that. He wants to teach the structure of the services, the, the content of the, of the hymns, why the melody uh, works, how, you know, the interact, interaction of text and melody, um, the science, you know, the, the, the science of the, of the harmonization and, uh, and, he gets a lot of young people. I mean, uh, uh, men and women. And and I, when I go there on a vespers, it's because it's a dormition church. I go there on a vespers on a in a summer in a warm summer night, and there might be twenty people there. I mean, young people around his the the, the chanting stand, and they've all have, you know committed to the music and they're reading it and they're chanting it beautifully in Greek and in English. So there is that too. I mean, you know. Um, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, Vicky. Yes. I, I don't have a. For some reason, I can't find my hand raiser emoji, Nicholas. Go ahead. Even as that brings to mind uh, another, I think, an opportunity for us to look at. Um, one of the other um, cautions about choirs is that we really shouldn't, especially when there's a lot of. And, um, virus around um, with, that we can aspirate because we're singers. Uh, we really shouldn't sing more than 30 minutes at a time. Okay, so when I thought about that, I thought, well, how do we come back? And um, what I'm kind of experimenting with with the Buffalo Choir is it gives us an opportunity to think how to share differently with chanters. You know, right, right now we did it just once. We've only sung one Sunday the chanters did the first part of the liturgy and then we did the end from the Lord's Prayer on. But that's not ideal. That's sharing, but that's minimal sharing. But the more I think about it, there is a chance for us to rearrange this notion that the chanters do orthos and we do liturgy. Maybe we do a little bit of orthos besides the doxology. Maybe the chanters come in and do some antiphonal things with us, or we switch on. I don't know. I think there's an opportunity there for us to break that division that you know sometimes creates barriers. Um, and that, that's that's a good challenge that's coming out of all this to think about that. Your Eminence. <laughs> Are you saying total 30 minutes? Like if you sing two minutes and then take a two minute break and then two minutes, total. you add up all the two minutes? Total. Or are you saying the half hour? <laughs> yeah. Is, yeah. Well, then, you know, it's almost like you're saying that you do the heart of the service, you know, like, like you lead up, like you do the anaphora, you go mm -hmm. from the true onward, you know? Right. 
I That's see. one way that well, you yeah. could also the choir could do the first part up to the cherubic hymn too. But again, that's to me a partial co collaboration. Um, I'm yeah. looking at it. I don't and I don't know the answer how it would work, but I'm looking at it how maybe we could do a little bit more of that um, yeah. in a little better way. Okay, I'm going to shut down for a second and let other people talk. As a reminder, for those who would like to ask a question or if you have a comment, you can type it into the chat. And when you hit the chat button, make sure you send your question or comment to Barbara Minton. And or feel free to raise your virtual hand. I see we already have one in the queue. But uh, before we get to the hand raisers, uh, Barb, do we have any questions uh, typed into the queue? Uh, right now, there is just one question. Um, and. Um... Uh, about the, the uh, patriarch's visit, and uh, would there be any opportunity for choir to sing at any event when the patriarch comes? And this is uh, this is somebody from Indiana, so is asking specifically about his coming to Notre Dame. I would simply, uh, you know, since it's from Indiana, I would simply suggest that the answer is we don't know because we don't have any real information from the uh, organizers on what's happening. The only thing you know, that we've received basically is, a, is an initial 10 day schedule uh, of the patriarchs. And we're gonna be, the bishops will be at, the Metropolitans will be at some of those days. We won't be there. Uh, he's got some, some time that's gonna just be private time for him too. So more than that, we don't know. It's Nick. from Nick is from that metropolis. Yeah. Notre Dame is in the Chicago yeah. metropolis, right? Yeah. Unless you've heard otherwise, what I've heard, and it, there's not very much information yet, October 28th is when he'll be at Notre Dame, and he will be at St. Andrews only for a short doxology, and that's that's all that I've heard that's going to happen at that parish. He's coming to a parish in Pittsburgh too. He's coming to Weirton for a short, you, you know, I think between landing at the, at the Pittsburgh airport and departure, I think it's six hours, you know? So we pick him up, we take him there. He does a doxology, uh, a meet and greet, take him back, you know, it's very fast. Well, good, Why we're looking forward. <laughs> yes, go ahead. There, was, there, there wasn't another question, but there was a comment um, uh, when Metropolitan Nicholas was talking about the uh, possibility of some congregational singing. And this was just a comment that in, um, um, in, uh, at Holy Trinity in Carmel um, that Father Bill used to encourage that and he would put the words to uh, various hymns, the variants for the week, the changing hymns in the Sunday bulletin and encourage people to, to sing those. So, you know, people do congregationally when we have a feast day, they sing so so Kiria, they sing you know, for those big feast days, they do sing those hymns. Um, so maybe if we could just expand their repertoire. <laughs> and I thought, you know, a good one would be the church hymn. It's kind of like the high schools having their their fight song or whatever, and we have our patron saint and to sing our church hymn and that maybe everyone in the parish should learn that and, and sing it all together. Just a thought. Good opportunities. Uh, Anna Krundike, I saw you had your hand up a moment ago. If you still have a question, feel free to unmute and, and ask. Well, I just put it in the um, chat, but it was just, if more could be said about the 30 minute limit uh, for choir singing, I had not heard that at all. Uh, in the Detroit metropolis, it was all restrictions were lifted. So when the choir had their first Sunday back, they sang the entire divine liturgy. Um, and we had been doing that, of course, up until then, the chanters had been doing that. So can more be said about that 30 minutes that's news <laughs> vicky did you have more uh well it, information it's, on it's it's complicated that's the recommendation um um 
a lot of it depends if you have a large building and the choir can be spaced. If you have a choir loft and the choir is upstairs, then, um, you know, it's not a strict rule, but there, this came at the height of the pandemic. Um, and so you have to look at, as you make your decisions, what are the safer things and, but nothing will ever be totally safe. So you, you have to look at the length of time um, the air circulation in your building, the space of the building. Um, one thing for sure um, is even more risky than singing in a larger church is a small rehearsal room for an hour, an hour and a half. They recommend staying out for, you know, singing for half an hour. Let I don't understand what this means, but three exchanges of air in the building and then you can go back and sing again. And I don't know how you'd handle that for rehearsal. But a small rehearsal room would be much more riskier than singing for 45 minutes in a, a large church in a choir loft with you know high ceilings. So Anna, it's um it's one of the things you should consider. Um, I I did it in Buffalo because we we talked about it as a choir. And another thing I took into consideration that I think we have to too is some people are more comfortable getting started and going back than others. And so how do you ease them in? And you know, moving to the choir loft now, we've been singing downstairs, but it looks like for a while we'll sing in the choir loft where it's a little bigger, we can space a little bit further, sing a little bit longer. So you, you have to sort of take all of the all of the decision making points and look at what's best. And one of them is the comfort level of your choir people. And now the vaccination level of your choir people. We feel, you know, much safer because everyone is vaccinated. But I, I, I would be worried if I had some unvaccinated and some vaccinated, then I wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't be an easy decision. I don't know if that answered it. It's complicated. <laughs> Barbara, were there any other questions in the queue? Um, no. Uh, well, Anna had put, slipped that one in, but she asked it. So, no, there's nothing else. So if people want to raise their hands and ask anything, Anne, you can unmute. Anne, if you unmute, Anne. Okay, you know. thank you. Um, along with everything else that was said, I think another consideration is the age group of our choir members. I think we all have a problem, uh, the issue of trying to get younger people to join choir. So if you have a choir that has seniors, and even though they've been vaccinated, that puts them... Uh, possibly a higher risk, although they're saying the Delta is affecting younger people as well. So if you have a mixed group of younger people and older or a choir that's all uh, an older generation, that can also be a hindrance, I think, with everything else that's been said. So that could be a factor also that prevents them that uh, not wanting to come back or feel it's too risky. And I don't know how you would handle that. I mean, it's almost like you would have to have a choir of all young people together yeah. uh, singing in 30 minute intervals or whatever, or a senior group singing within those that time frame for them to feel a little more secure. Just a thought. Might be. Very good. Well, thank you, Anne. And I'd like to take a moment to thank your Eminence, Metropolitan Nicholas and Metropolitan Savas for being with us this evening, offering us two wonderful reflections. We really have a lot to think on as we take our next steps in the coming year. We can just keep on doing what we can uh, as time goes on and um, take it one, one day at a time. But our church music ministry is still going strong one way or another, and uh, we have a lot to consider as time goes on. So I'd like to give a quick roadmap to what's coming up this weekend for those of you who are with us tonight. Although this isn't a true convention this year, a true in-person deal, we will be having many of the same events this weekend that we usually do hold at a convention. So tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock, 
we'll be holding our Federation Council meeting. So we'll have a few more reports and updates to share. And then our major new business item will be the election of officers and state representatives for the coming year. We will also have some details on next year's convention, God willing, in person next summer. We hope to have as many parishes represented as possible at tomorrow's meeting. Then tomorrow night at 7.30, something new, we will be debuting our first ever virtual scholarship concert by several of our past MEFGOX scholarship recipients. So those of you who are on the MEFGOX email distribution list have already received the program for tomorrow evening's event. Our MC will be Father Dimitrios Kazakis of West Babylon, New York, who is also one of our past scholarship recipients. So it's going to be a very fun event. And of course, we will have the presentation of our scholarship awards for this year, for 2021. We have several deserving students this year receiving scholarships, so we hope you'll be able to tune in for that. Now, once you sign off tomorrow night, Saturday night, don't forget to set your alarm for church in the morning because Sunday morning we'll have divine liturgy. If you're not able to attend services at your own parish, services will be live streamed from Saints Constantine and Helen in Westland, Michigan, where I understand their choir is returning for its first Sunday back to sing at the divine liturgy. We'll be holding our annual memorial service in memory of our beloved church musicians who have fallen asleep in the Lord. And then at the end of liturgy, our vice president, Barbara Minton, on my behalf, will be presenting the Patriarch Athenagoras Medal for Distinguished Metropolis Service. So even if you will be attending liturgy at your own church on Sunday, make sure you can get home in time to tune in for the award ceremony. And I believe liturgy in Westland starts at 10 a.m. Uh, someone can correct me if yes. that's not right. Then finally, to wrap up our weekend, on Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock, Dr. Anne-Marie Kukios will be leading a preview to our 2022 convention to review some of my music arrangement that will be sung next summer. We're looking forward to our friends in Westland leading us in singing in person so those of us tuning in virtually can follow along from home before we say our final farewells on Sunday. So have your Bodal music ready, and if you need a copy, please email me. I'd be glad to send you a PDF before Sunday. So at this point, we've concluded our presentation for the evening, but everyone is welcome to stay on for some parea and social time together as we end our recording and we can greet each other and have a little coffee hour, get your coffee ready. Happy Friday as Metropolitan Savas has greeted us. It's been a week, but good to see you all. We had a nice group this evening and God willing more tomorrow for our big scholarship.